Welcome back. I'm Debbie Crawford, and we're here with Jerry Gooden, the sheriff of Scottsburg. And you, well, actually, it's Scott County, Scott County not yes, Scottsburg. Yes, yes. So mm -hmm. you, you're actually doing some cool things up there. Well, we're doing things different. Uh, we've, we've had some problems over in Scott County, obviously, as right. everyone else has had across the United States. And instead of attacking that problem uh, with the same old uh, solutions, we're going, we're pushing the envelope. We're doing things different. And we're actually seeing some uh, pretty positive results from it, and, and we're really excited on some of the things that's happened. Oh, that's cool, because that's one of my questions is, with all these new programs you put in with for the inmates, how, what is your return rate? Is it lowered? Or is it still the same? Well, right now, what we've got going is, is this. I kind of give you a little overview of what right. our plan was and, and, and how we made this happen, and then it can go into the jail uh, and then the numbers right. and that kind of stuff. Uh, when I came in, I campaigned on a uh, zero tolerance, uh, making Scott County a, a drug-free county. And you've made sure that happened. <laughs> and we have been at it. Yeah, my men and women have really went above and beyond. Uh, last year in Scott County, just the sheriff's office alone made 964 criminal arrests. Hmm. Uh, about 222 of those were drug-related. Uh, that's the most arrests that the sheriff's department in Scott County has ever made. Uh, so we were excited about being able to come out uh, with a full head of steam. But we also knew that we can't arrest ourselves out of this situation. We know that when those folks go back in the jail, right. we have to provide them with some type of training. Yeah, a program uh, of some kind. Absolutely, to get them to better themselves, to be a contributing uh, part of society. So what was going on in the past and what happens in most jail situations across the whole U.S. is, is uh, you get someone that's been arrested, they'll get arrested for uh, being possession of drugs or right. whatever it happens. They would go into the jail. Uh, they would sit in the jail for six, eight months, and they would just sit there, and all they would do is just sit there and eat and drink and figure out what their next crime was going to be. They had no uh, you know, ambition about getting any kind of education, getting any kind of training to get out and make themselves a better citizen. They didn't have another option. They did not. There Absolutely. was nothing there. Absolutely so. there wasn't. So, and then when they served their time, uh, they were a felon, so they was having a hard time finding a job. Uh, so uh, they go out on the street, after about the third day, they've already made their families and everybody upset when they had nowhere to go. Right. They're homeless uh, and they can't get a job. So after about the third day, they start getting hungry and they make a decision. Do I go steal food or I just go back to this drug that I was on and right. mask, you know what I'm saying, the problems I had. And then they would do that and then they would get arrested again. It was just the revolving door syndrome right. that we talked about. So what we did is this. We're, we're arresting everybody at zero tolerance since it's involved in drug activity, period. Okay, when they get in there, we are offering them one uh, educational opportunities. We're trying to get everybody that does not have a GED when they come in. We're trying to get them involved and enrolled in a GED right. uh, to get a high school education to help them get a job. Not only are we doing that, uh, we have trustees inside the jail that work in the kitchen, uh, and they were just down there working in the kitchen and really wasn't getting anything out of it. So what we decided is, is hey, let's give them some training. They're doing all this work. Uh, this is a professional food service that we have here. Right. Let's get to some training on it. So we, what we did is we went in, we get all those folks safe food handling degrees. And then they way. get certified. Absolutely. And they get certified when they get out, they can get a job in any right. kind of a, a restaurant or a kitchen area. Uh, and then we, we did something that we feel is very spectacular. We actually contacted the uh, state of Indiana, River Valley Opportunities from here, uh, resources from here in actually Jefferson County, right. and we put together a welding program for our inmates. Uh, it was the first time ever done in the state of Indiana in a county jail. Uh, so what happened is, is we graduated 10 folks uh, oh, with welding wow. degrees from yeah. our jail. Uh, and everything we do revolves around education. Uh, I've always heard, I come from an educational family. My dad was in education, my brother's in education, my sister's in education. Right. Uh, I was kind of the black sheep being a police officer, <laughs> I guess. But I still look back at that education and I understand how right. important that is. And what we try to do is from the time that those folks come into our jail, we instill into them that education levels the playing field. Yeah. That's what we try to make everybody do. And it does. It absolutely does. And we're trying to provide that. We graduated 10 people uh, last year GEDs. We've got a graduation tomorrow uh, with another group of GED graduates we've oh, got wow. coming in. So we're continuing this thing. We're working on another welding class. We're getting ready to start. Uh, we, we just qualified. I've got a uh, colonel that works for me. His name is Ray Dawson. He does our grant work and works with the grants in the jail right. to make this stuff happen. We just got a grant from the Attorney General's office uh, in Indiana stay grand, to have a JCAP program happening inside of our jail. Oh, Gem wow. Jail chemical addiction program. Yes. So what happens is we've got, uh, we're going to have 10 females. We're going to start with the females. We put them in a pod inside the jail and they live 
eat, breathe. Right. You know, saying uh, recovery the whole yes. time they're in there. Yes. So we're offering all these opportunities, and, and we're we're continuing. We're trying to find new stuff. We're looking now at offering a, a fork uh, lift driving class. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking at even possibly starting a CDL class for folks with CDL uh, qualifications. What we do is is we have been partnering also with the factories in the area, uh, and uh, we have them bring um, applications to the jail. So oh, yeah. when someone gets out, okay, then they we give them an application. We tell them how they need to succeed, and we give them that opportunity to do it. I think sometimes that's all people need is to know that there is another avenue than what they've been used to. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and here's the thing that, that we looked at, it, and, and especially the way that I look at it is this. If we arrest those folks, and we put them in the jail, and we offer them nothing, we're just housing them, warehousing them, that's You're, really, that's a shame on us. They're kind of right? set up for failure. Absolutely, they are. Right. And it's a shame on us for doing that. But what we're doing is, is we're bringing them into jail. We're providing them opportunity. We're giving them training. We're giving them the opportunity. Because right. it, believe it or not, I know some people find it hard to believe. There are some people out here who never had a chance, who never had an opportunity. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we're giving them that opportunity. Now, once we provide them the training, once we give them all that stuff, uh, and they get out and they mess up and come back, then it's shame on them. Exactly. Because we've done what we think we can to, to try to make them successful. You've given the them world. an option. It's me. And they have to either take it or they end up where Take where it or leave it. Yeah, it absolutely. absolutely. Well, let's hope that's lowered the return rate. It has. And what we're seeing is this, and obviously it's too early to be able to tell now. But right. We were averaging around 200 people inside of the Scott County Jail whenever I took over. Uh, right now we are actually down to about 185. Oh, wow. 180, 185. Yes. Uh, which... Uh, is a pretty significant number just in one year. It is. Uh, our goal, we do have a goal, and that's of 100 inmates. We want to get down to 100. Uh, and it, it's just good stories. I mean, it, and, and I know people get tired of hearing stories, oh, but no. here's, a, here's one of the best stories we have, and I've told this a thousand times, and I've just about wore it out, but I keep telling it. We had a gentleman that was in the jail. He was there for, for several different charges. Uh, so he went through our programs. He got a welding degree. Uh, we had we were remodeling the old jail in Scott County, and we're using uh, prisoners to do it. Right. We're teaching them how That's to right. carpenter, how to paint, how to do all these things. They're learning it. Plus, they want to give back. That's something they can do. They volunteer to give back. Right. So we're using these folks uh, to do labor. Well, we had a uh, an electric heating and air company that was inside of our jail that was doing work. So he, as one of our trainees, was working with the the folks that was in there. Uh, he got out of jail at uh, like at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. At one o'clock on that same day, he was back inside of the jail working with the electric company Finishing that we the had job that. He'd started. Yes, and they hired him as a right. full-time employee. If we can make that happen with everybody, oh, or wow. that one success story, think of That's the thousands, it. thousands of dollars that saves taxpayers. Oh, yeah. And now this person's able to go out live a normal life, Yes. be a normal family member, yes. be something that they can be proud of. It saved and, his life. Still. Absolutely, absolutely did. And we've got stories like that that that's just the most, the one I, prevalent that I use because oh. it's such a great story. You need I to use tell. it as much as you can, as often <laughs> as you can. I think yeah. that's so cool. It's worth at training all those people. If you can save one, it's absolutely. worth it. And absolutely. you've obviously saved more than one. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not just you. You have people behind you that help do all this, don't absolutely, you? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. What What is, is this? We we have uh, what we call brainstorming sessions uh, at least once a week right. where I'll call in uh, my commanders at, uh, at, at Scott County at the jail and also my road folks, and we will sit down and brainstorm. What have you heard this week at, that maybe someone in the community would like to see? What have you heard this week on the news that somebody's doing different right. that maybe we can implement to make our stuff better? So we are very open-minded. I've found out that you have to be open-minded. You have yeah. to be able to take input, and you have to give things a chance to work. Uh, we, I've got an open door at my office. Uh, my office is always open for folks to come in and knock on the door. Uh, I've got business cards. It's got my personal cell phone number on it. And all the other sheriffs in the state say that I'm the craziest sheriff there is for putting my personal <laughs> well, cell phone. But in, I, it's a service. I'm well, providing the service. In Scott County, they know where you live. So <laughs> yeah, it's, you can right. either put your number on there or they're going to be knocking on your door. Yeah, yeah you got it right. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, I enjoy it. I love the people of Scott County. Uh, I love interacting with people. And what we really love, too, is is the changes that we've been able to make. And, right. and that's just on the jail side. Right. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff on the enforcement side that we're 
starting that we have done and we're and we're even adding more and more to it. Right. Now you've got a lot of new programs that are coming out. So what are some yeah, of do. those? Yeah we do. We're excited about it. Probably the, the one that we're most excited about what we think is really gonna make a huge difference is is our senior citizens program. Uh, we have uh, senior citizens and also maybe handicapped individuals in our county that are homebound oh, yeah. uh, and they don't have anybody to really check on them on a regular basis. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to put the opportunity out for those folks to contact us, give us all your information so we can contact you by phone or stop by and see how you're doing right. to make sure that you're safe, you're healthy and you're alive. Uh, and we're excited about getting that started. That's one of the programs we got going. Another program that we're, that we're getting ready and we've already actually started is called Township Policing, uh, where every single township within Scott County, we are assigning our reserve officers uh, to uh, patrol those areas along with our uh, paid full-time officers. Right. And uh, that way there's always a police presence. Uh, that presence does deter crime. It does. So we're really excited about that. And one thing too that I'm extremely excited about, I've got a, uh, a gentleman by the name of Lonnie Combs that's head of my reserve uh, force there at the Sheriff's Office and uh, he has done an excellent job. Last year alone we had over 10,000 hours of service by our oh, reserves. Oh my goodness, that's and if a you, lot. Yeah, if you figure that up, it's over like $215,000 saving tax money yes. for the county. Yes. And uh, my reserves have done an excellent job. I'm surrounded by a really, really great group of people and that's what really makes this thing happen. Well, it seems like they are, they're they into it 100%. When you decide something, they're into it 100%. So it makes it makes it work. It, it does. It makes it work and I, I'm really pleased to have those folks. And, and we, we've got so many things going on, it's hard to remember them all. We've got a, a Wanted on Warrant Wednesday. It's been extremely successful. I like that. So we, we make sure we share that over. Good. So we Excellent. bring that in and put it out there because you never know where those people are. They're not always in Scott County. Mm -hmm. They can be in the surrounding counties, and Jefferson County is close enough. Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> so. yes, it is. We have a lot of interaction between our counties. Right. And we appreciate you all doing that. And uh, one thing we did is, is, is when I went in, is I made sure that all the folks that work for me knew that we are public servants. Right. And we provide service to the public. That's what we are about, is public servants first. So, uh, and they've caught on to that uh, that notion and that uh, concept and, and we're professionalizing uh, the agency and what we want is is this we hope nobody never has a crime right. at their home but if they have a crime and they see the Scott County Sheriff's Office show up they know that that crime is going to be completed the investigation is going to be completed it's going to be completed correctly and uh, in a very professional way and we're going to have compassion to those uh, those victims and those folks that are involved and that's really yes. the only thing we can ask for uh, and that's what we're shooting for. Well, you want them to trust the department. Absolutely. And everybody that's in there. So Absolutely. I think that's why you're being so diligent about doing things the right way to make sure people understand that Scott County Sheriff's Department is going to do it right. Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. And and uh, some of the things that we're doing, too, is, is we're, we've got, uh, with like you said, the public interaction. Yes. You would not believe, because we have used tips from the public. One of the biggest uh, things that we found when we come in here, and it's no different, it's, it's everywhere, but people would call in a tip on something that was going on and they'd never really see any any action over it, you know, it right. was kind of so. But what we've done is, is we're approaching that different, okay? When we get a tip, if it's drug related or whatever it is, we attack that tip immediately. Uh, and that's something that's a little different than what most police agencies do because right. most police agencies when they get drug tips They'll send them to their their drug investigators. They'll sort through them. They'll they try to do these investigations oh. which takes a very lengthy amount of time right uh, and it's, it's kind of bad deal because you've got the victims, the true victims are the neighbors that are having to sit there and see and their wait. neighbors constantly come and go up all night stealing their stuff. Right. So we have, we've taken a different approach on it. When we get a tip on something we act on it immediately. Uh, that has created a influx, a tidal wave, I guess I should say, of tips that we get. And what we tell folks is is that they can remain anonymous. We don't want your name. We just want the tips. We want to know right. where these bad things are happening at. Because right. we're going to take care of it. And we want people to know when they call us that it will be taken care of. And the public has been tremendous. Uh, it has really has. We've got, we get so many tips. It's, it's amazing. Uh, well, once they we realize want. they can trust you and that you're going to act on it quickly, you will get that that's wonderful that the, they're trusting you enough to do that. The cooperation has been excellent. Yes. And one thing what we're, we're, we're doing now is this. We knew uh, with the drug problem, we had to attack our local dealers. Yes. And we have done that. We have put them on the run. But we also know that the surrounding counties 
uh, and also we've got a big city that's just about 34 miles, 30 miles south of us, Louisville, Kentucky, <laughs> right. that a lot of this stuff comes from. Yeah. So what we have done is we are working hand in hand with uh, Louisville Metro Police Department. We're working hand in hand with Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we just returned a stolen weapon uh, to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office right. this past weekend that we'd recovered in one of our drug raids. Uh, we're working hand in hand with Washington County, Jackson County. We're working in Jennings. All of our neighbors were working hand in hand with them. That and makes a difference. It does. And what we tell people is this, if you're from Scott County and you're going these other places to do crimes or you're going to those places to bring it back to Scott County, then you can expect trouble. And what we also want people to know is, is this, from the surrounding counties and surrounding states even, right. that when you come to Scott County, you better not think about doing any crime. Because if you do, you're going to be in jail. And, and that's, that's what we want. We want people to be able to visit Scott County right. and know that they are completely safe and that they, that's a great place for your kids to be raised. Uh, the ultimate goal is, is to be able to drive down the roadway and see children playing in their front yards. Oh, that's man. the ultimate goal, that and that, be... that's what we're working towards. I think you're doing a great job. I, I'm glad you came in. Now, is there anything else that we can tell people that we haven't already talked about? We talked about the new officers in the districts, and we've talked about the inmates and their training. What else? Is there anything else we've missed? Well, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm extremely lucky. Uh, we had several positions that had been open yes. uh, for deputies' jobs when I came into Scott County and then right after I took over. And we have actually, I kind of joke about it, but we've actually filled those slots. We actually have an all-star team, <laughs> I'd say, in that sense. But we have recruited folks that uh, with many years of experience. We have one of your former deputies from Jefferson County, right. Keith Hartman, who is working for us. Right. Uh, we have all of the folks that we've brought in are experienced law enforcement officers that wanted to come to us because this good stuff that they saw happening and wanted to be a part of that and that makes us feel really good too it has uh, and to. hopefully you know what i'm saying that uh, we can keep that yeah. going well i, th I think you, i think you'll keep it going as long as you have that crew you got with you now mm -hmm. that'll and then just bring in some more as you can afford it <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> now what if somebody wants to work for you all or volunteer you know mm -hmm. if you want to have a an officer or a retired officer that wants to come in and volunteer, what do they need to do? Well, they just need to contact us there at the jail. Uh, they can contact uh, Lonnie Combs is the person they need to contact. He's the head okay. of my reserves and my volunteers. Uh, they can contact him. Uh, right now, we are actually full uh, with our reserves. We've had an abundant number of folks who wanted to be a part of it, too, right. that's local. And we've seized that, obviously, that opportunity. Yes. Uh, and we are full with our reserves. But we also need people, like we're starting our senior citizens program, to be able to check on the elderly folks right. to make phone calls uh, we have uh, people who uh, believe it or not and this is a good thing this is I, I, we never dreamed this would happen but it's it's good we call it started on our one on work Wednesday okay we have people because the internet is so oh worldwide now <laughs> yes we have people that do their own investigations and finding our folks that we want on warrant and they call us up and tell us where they're at oh. exactly oh so, my goodness so not only have they started doing it on our wanted on warrant wednesday they went on our web on our web page because we have a web page and i'm gonna give that out if you don't care oh yes go right ahead it's www scottcountysheriff.org okay so we encourage people to go on there because we actually have the folks that are wanted out of scott county uh listed on there that have warrants that we want to get picked up so what we've done is is our wanted on warrant wednesday has, has been successful we've got people now that's going on our other warrants and they're looking through those and they're finding those warrants and they're calling us and saying hey James Doe is at this location. I seen he's right. wanted on your warrant list. Oh, so we, I'm wow. telling you, it's worked out. It's it's been fantastic. That's that's community involvement. It is. That's yeah. what it's all about, and we want to keep that going. Uh, and uh, anybody that's got a tip, anybody that's got anything, they they know that they can feel free to contact me directly or contact any of my officers, and they know right. that uh, they'll be kept secret, and uh, their their information will definitely be used. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm really glad you came in today. I appreciate you having us. Oh, well, you're welcome. Uh, if there is anything that the public uh, any ideas we're open for suggestions that's the one yes. thing this is, has to be a two-way thing right uh, i have people calling me all the time you know saying hey i seen in such and such location where they're doing this you know it seems to be working whatever so we take that information and we we analyze it see if it's something that we think we can use right. if it's not nothing we can't use we'll tell the folks we can't because of right this it's different whatever sometimes it's funding sometimes it's bodies to make it happen mm -hmm. but uh you all have really done a good job trying to figure out a way to make things work. Well, we appreciate it, and we're going to keep it up. Uh, we were, we're just getting started, and uh, we've got a lot of, again, a lot of new programs, and uh, we're really excited about it. And I've got a group of folks that, that work for me that are excited about doing their job, and, and they love people, uh, and that's about me. I love people. Uh, so that makes a difference. We're going to do everything we can to give them the best service 
uh, that we can possibly get. Well, we'll have to have you back. Absolutely. A couple of weeks, we'll, well, your new program that you've got going on, we'll have you back and see how that's going. Be so. glad to come back. Wonderful. Well, thanks again for being here. And as always, we appreciate our sponsors, and we thank you for watching.